I never seem to be really prepared for this. <laughs> so let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Father in heaven, humbly we come before you. We come that we might be able to understand what you have preserved for us in your holy scriptures. Lord, we come here to worship you, to praise you, to give you glory. So open our minds and our hearts that we might be able to see and to hear what you have in store for us. Send your angels to drive out the darkness that the light might be seen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our scripture reading, John 4, and as it was talking, the story is about when Jesus came to the uh, Samaritan well, which was Jacob's well, and the lady came to draw water. And as he was talking with her, he said to her in answer to her question, where do we worship and how do we worship? He told her that the hour has come when men should worship God in spirit and in truth. Now I would like to know just how much this congregation knows about what it means to worship God in spirit. So now I'm going to give you the opportunity to tell me. But I want you to, to uh, raise your hand and I'll acknowledge you. And then I want to write it down as to what it is that you say. It is the way we worship God in spirit. Frank? In spirit or in truth? Just spirit. Okay. Okay. Along with uh, Frank's, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit thing, um, it, with the Holy Spirit in your mind, it gives you the mindset of being able to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your mind what the Bible is trying to present to you, what through God's Word. Okay. All right. Peggy? I think it also can mean coming to worship before God because you want to. You have the right mindset, the right spirit, the right attitude. You're not coming because, well, my parents made me come or something like that. You're coming because you You're talking about the right spirit and uh, love, the spirit of love. All right, is there other spirits? Okay. Um, the verse I keep thinking about is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Maybe that has something to do with it. Uh huh. With a full surrender. Would that be what you're trying to say? To tell me. Okay. Anything else, Tony? I'll just kind of go along with this, Peggy. It's, to me, it's like I really believe. Uh, believe in God, but worshiping God, but he 
says to do, I, I believe it. It's uh, not just going along. So it's with all my heart, with love, and, and I fully believe that uh, you know, worshiping God in spirit. When you're, ta when you're talking about believing, are you talking about obey? Uh, obey. Uh, okay. Uh, let me let me have uh, Lisa. Lisa. I think that worshiping God in spirit is with our actions. About what? It's using. It's with our actions. With our actions. Yes. Okay. Tony. Allowing the Holy Spirit to make changes in your life. To make the change. Okay. A willingness? A willingness. Okay. I see another hand somewhere. Uh, Elaine? It seems to me that that's the only way we can talk to God is through our spirit. Uh, I mean, we can't see him. We can't go up to heaven where he is. But we can talk to him every moment of the day through our spirit. So he's totally accessible to us at any moment that we need him. Then can I say it this way? Humbly, humbling prayer. Could that be what you're saying? Yeah. Or a humble prayer? Now you're talking about life? Life, your life. All right, now let's go to the subject of truth. What does my audience here know about worshiping in truth? I'll start with you, Frank, and then I'll go back to the readings. It's written, thy word, O Lord, is truth. Well, repeat that again. Thy word, O Lord, is truth. Okay. Uh, Paul or Lisa? God is truth. Amen. Worship God, he's the truth. Or Christ is, tr is the truth? Yes. Okay. Our understanding or knowledge of him? Yes. Kind of piggybacking what he said, um, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I feel like you abs there's absolutely truth in the Bible, but it's twofold. You can't have the truth in the Bible without first having the truth with Jesus first. The truth of Jesus Christ. Well, the truth that Jesus, well, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus yes. is the truth. So he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You can't keep them first without loving him first. They won't work. We have anyone else? Yeah. Come on. Tell me.
Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Do you have something, Jay? Yeah. When Christ prayed for the disciples and for the church in 17 chapter of John, he said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shalt keep them from evil. They are not the world, even though I am not the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And for their sake, I sanctify myself, and they might be sanctified through the truth. Okay, and no one said anything about the Sabbath being the truth. And no one said anything about that uh, when you uh, die, the truth is you turn to dust and you stay there until God brings you out. No one said anything about that, but all these things are important. All of them. They are the truth, and no one said anything about the truth. Uh, they said about Jesus being the truth or the truth of God. Satan himself, whenever he was still in heaven, told lies about God. So, we are to worship God in truth. In other words, don't believe the lies which Satan has told about God. Now, there is also a spirit of love which was talked to, which we said. There is a spirit of being humble a spirit of being willingness, a spirit of obedience, and we talked about all of those. And there's also other biblical truths about the truth. Now, can we worship God in spirit and not in truth? Did I hear a yes or a no? No. no? Well, why not? Because they go together. Like things and oh, you mean they're like a horse and a carriage? Like two peas and a pod? Like love and marriage? They go together. Huh? Okay. All right. You saved me telling you that. Because you already know that. You see, you know more than what you really think you do about God. Now, can we worship God in truth, but not in spirit? No, no. Well, why not? They still go together. It's more or less one. Peggy, were you going to say something? I've seen you. I'm going to say the devil does it, but I believe that people who don't know the truth can worship God in the truth that they know. Right. Well, so I believe that you can worship God. Maybe not know the truth that we know, but it's, and, but it's what they know at that time. Okay. All right. She says it's possible that a person does not know all the truth and they still can worship God in spirit. How about in these last days? Christ is ready to come. And he says that he is able to present us before the Father without spot or wrinkle. He will make us perfect. Okay, now let's turn to Matthew uh, 25. No, that's the wrong one. That's not the one I want to look at right now. Let's look at uh, John fourteen twenty six.
But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now let's also turn to the chapter 16, verse 13. How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He says there that whenever the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Now, if I worship God in spirit and I do not know the truth, will he fulfill this promise of guiding me into all truth? He's not a liar. He will keep that promise. You want me to point you out some examples? There's two recent ones. Barbara, you are a recent one who wanted to worship God in spirit. But what did he do for her but guide her to what? The truth. How about uh, Teresa Ellis? I mean, that's not her name. Terry Ellis. She was a Catholic, and her husband persuaded her to become a Protestant of another, a member of another church. And then he wanted to have uh, Bible studies, uh, and then she came where? To the truth. For the Adventist church teaches the truth. You see, the truth about that God loves us with an everlasting love and that he wants us to love one another as he has loved us and that he is our creator and that we should be worshiping him. All these truths, these people have been, hey, actually every last one of us was guided by the Holy Spirit to the truth. That's why we're here. Every last one of us. You see. So if a person is out there really worshiping God in the spirit, God's eventually going to show them the truth. Now what they do with that truth is their choice. What you and I did with the truth when it was shown to us is what we did. So, to just worship God in the truth, I mean in the spirit, you need to have the truth also. You have to have both. So, let's look at it in another way. Here we are in the church that teaches the truth and we go by the Bible and the Bible only. Can I follow this and still not be worshiping God in the Spirit? Now there is a text, and I was trying to find it, an experience that, that and I was trying to find it, and I, could, I didn't find it. I don't know whether I was just plain blind or what. But I remember of reading about it, of where Jesus tells about the two groups. The one group uh, was doing things, taking care of the needy and all these things, and 
and so on. And the other group was doing the same thing, and they were casting out uh, demons and all of this. And in that, why uh, he said to the one group that they were to come and go to heaven, and these are my words, not what it is written in the Bible. And then uh, the other group, he said, depart from me. Now, hey, they were both doing the same thing. How come one group and not the other? He said he didn't know. Apparently, they weren't worshiping God in truth, in spirit, just in what he was telling them to do. You see, there's such a thing as I can read the Bible and I can know what I'm supposed to do. And then I can do it, but I can be doing it for the wrong reason. And not in the spirit of love of God. Nor in the spirit of loving fellow men. But in the spirit of, well, I wanna, I wanna look good. So that's why I wear this tie. That's why I wear this suit. Because I want to look good. You see. Where clothing has nothing to do with salvation. It is the changed heart. It is worshiping God in spirit and in truth. So I need to stop and think about what I'm doing. Am I worshiping God in spirit and in truth? Did you find that text for me, Frank? I think it's uh, Matthew 7, 21. Okay, let's go there and see. We'll find out. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's the one. I don't know why I couldn't find it. I was even using a concordance to try and find it. And every word I'd use come up wrong. It, I guess that was so that it, it would happen today the way it does. See, things don't just happen to us. God has control, and he leads us. And then we need to have that spirit of willingness and that spirit of obedience. And that's one of the ways in which we worship God in spirit and in truth. He leads us to the truth, and then he asks us to be willing. And now we come to the fact that God seems like he's so, what Tony was talking about last week, about being so strict and so exacting in what he asks us to do. I suggest that we look at it from a different angle. Let's look at it from the angle that God so loves me that he does not want me to even touch the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He does not want me to experience evil. And therefore he tells me, don't you run out in that street. 
because you're going to get hit and you're going to get hurt. Don't, wouldn't we tell our child that? And I, when I was a kid, we lived on a farm that there was a railroad, and we were cautioned, don't you play on that railroad, and if you go down near the railroad, listen for the train, is what my mother told me. Well, it took me an, a next 20 years to finally find out that why my mother said that. And my father sometimes told me, do this. And I'd say, why? And he'd say, because I said so. And I'd say, just because you said so? You see, it took me a while to learn that my father loved me. And that he didn't want me to get hurt. That's the reason why God asks us. To worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit of being humble. And what does he say? Isn't it someplace he tells us, isn't it written that humble thyself and to pray? Yes, we need to pray. Because the oftener that we come to Sabbath school and church, and the more times that we study God's word. And the more times we pray and communicate with God, and he communicates with us, the more we do it, the more we become like Christ. And the more we behold him, the more we become like him. And if we're going to become like him, then wouldn't we want to worship the Father as he did? Let's turn to Philippians 2. Verse 6, Philippians 2. Well, maybe we ought to read verse 5. Start with verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Now, how many of us, whenever we're in a good position or a high position, and we know we have that position, that we don't, the natural tendency is to make a reputation for myself. Well, Jesus, even though he was like God, and was God, and was fully divine, he did not try to make himself a reputation as being God. And took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man, and now he found himself, as he was here on earth, in the likeness of man. And being found in the fashion of a man, he did what? He humbled himself. And became what? Obedient unto what? Death. Even the death? of a cross. Therefore, God has called him to a higher place. If we are to be like Christ, then should we not be, have the spirit of humbleness, the spirit of willingness, and the spirit of obedience? Isn't this part of worshiping our God in the spirit? And then shouldn't we be doing those things that are the truth, that God asks us to do a certain thing a certain way? Now, just what in the world and why in the world would he ask us to do certain things a certain way? Hey, 
Aren't we all sinners? Which one of you are no longer a sinner? Well, yeah, we might be saints because a saint is a repentant sinner. So we could easily be a saint in that way. Yes. But as sinners, why, we need God. We need Jesus. We need him. And as we worship him in spirit and truth, it sometimes seems that we are asked to do too many things and they seem to be too strict or too, too uh, demanding. Well, just remember, there's sin that needs to be gotten rid of in our lives. And that's how he does it. Has us to do these things the way he wants us to do them. That's why he asks us to be willing. That's why he asks us to be obedient. Because he wants to rid our lives of sin. How many of you want to live in heaven? Well, all of us do. We all put up our hands and say we want to live there. Yeah, well, you know, if you go live in heaven, hey, is there going to be any sin in heaven? Nope. They throw, Christ threw, and the angels fought and threw Satan and his angels out. And do you think us poor humans are going to get back in heaven with sin in our lives? Of course not. And so all the problems you have to face is God making, having you face something where you need to learn something because your problems don't happen just because he wants a, uh, well, they just happened. No, they are guided. Your problems are guided by God as well as the problem being solved is by God. My life, as I look back over it, I can see where God guided me many times. He has saved me even at this day in times when I thought, wow, you mean I was stupid enough to do that and God still protected me? <laughs> you see, I have learned that God really loves me. So why should I hesitate to be obedient and to be willing and to be humble before my God and worship him in spirit and in truth?